Today we're going to look at why building web service APIs with Service Stack results in a simple, fast and highly productive foundation to any web-based project. Service Stack is a mature framework for building web service APIs with a focus on simplicity, speed and developer experience. A lot of these traits stem from its consistent message-centric design, which is at the core of Service Stack's architecture. This design can be seen when we look at what is needed to create your own Service Stack service. All Service Stack services require a Request Data Transfer Object, or DTO class, which specifies the data structure of the message the service accepts as input. The definition of this class is what's used to declare your service contracts, which along with the base URL of the host is all that's required to invoke a remote Service Stack service. Let's look at a Hello World example service that comes with Service Stack project templates to highlight how this works. The Hello class is the request DTO, which has a single string name property as the data of the DTO. This class also implements the iReturn Hello response interface, which tells the client what the response data structure that a successful response should deserialize into, which is used to enable Service Stack's optimal typed client API. With this information, we now have a typed end-to-end -end service with a well-defined message contract, where the implementation inside the service is not important to the client making the request. This not only makes the integration for the client easier, but also gives the API developers confidence and flexibility to change and maintain that service functionality over time. This hello message contract then lends itself to communicate consistently with any language or platform that can represent the simple message objects. Let's have a look at a C Sharp client talking to our Hello service. Usually clients talking to a web service will specify the route, in this case forward slash hello, while providing the name value through a query string, form data or body, and then deserialize a response into an expected structure. We can do the exact same thing with the service stack client, and it works as expected, but thanks to this message-centric design, we just don't have to. Instead, to call a specific service, we only need the request DTO class, and the client knows that we will get a strongly typed response in return, in this case, the hello response type. We did not need to know the path of the route, how to pass the data, or what the response data type would be from, say, the API documentation. All this information is a part of the request DTO, which the JSON service client can infer. This removes several points of developer friction when integrating with web service APIs that would otherwise need to be in another specification. What is the route path? What data does this service accept? How do I specify it? And what data do I expect to get back? The answer to all these questions is encapsulated in the well-defined message contract for our service stack service, thanks to our request and response DTOs. This means there is a consistent approach regardless of language or platform. The client only needs to populate the request message type and get back an associated iReturn message as a response. To make this easier across languages, the Service Stack host generates the message DTOs in supported languages for all services available on the running Service Stack server. This enables a client feature called Add Service Stack Reference to make it easy to get the code you need directly from the server you're integrating with. You don't need to manually maintain an intermediary spec or do any transformations, as all the code for the required DTOs is provided by the Service Stack server. Another example of this is in the Service Stack single page app templates with the use of a TypeScript client. Built right into the template, we can quickly iterate on both the server and the client using hot reloads while the service is being developed. Updating the client request and response DTOs when we change them on the server can be done quickly, and you continue to benefit from the strongly typed messages even during the development of both the TypeScript front-end and your back-end service stack services. The advantages of this message-centric design flows further to the back-end as well. Service Stack services become the right once of backend integrations since they are not limited to communicating just over HTTP. For example, the Service Stack host can expose all the existing services as gRPC services with only a small amount of one off code changes. This enables your existing service implementations to be accessed by all native gRPC clients as Service Stack has all the information necessary to generate the required .proto file. No need to maintain a plain text.proto file, and you can use native gRPC clients across any platform for maximum reuse of your services. 
Even non-synchronous communication via message queues or MQ can be enabled to use the same service implementation as gRPC and HTTP. ServiceStack works with multiple MQ brokers and technologies to suit different hosting environments, and again, we see here that MQ clients only require the request DTOs and host address to communicate with your ServiceStack service. Message-based systems allow for reach and reuse by reducing complexity with well-defined API contracts and service boundaries. Another advantage of this architecture in ServiceStack is the separation of the message DTOs and the serialization format. Viewing the hello service in a browser, we see a HTML view of the response since that's the format the browser requests. Content negotiation supports several methods, for example we can return JSON by simply adding .json to the end of a URL. The same with the other formats, the serialization format is controlled by the client, but the message stays the same. ServiceStack supports many serialization formats, including JSON, XML, CSV, Protobuf and MessagePack to name a few, and it also gives developers a well-defined path forward to support their own serialization formats. By having a message-centric design, we can add value to these message types which can flow to the rest of our systems, and the benefits flow both ways. From simplifying our service implementation to our client integration, the additional consistency and metadata attached to our messages can mean the less we have to do on the front-end or back-end implementation. For example, on the client, validation and error handling data can become a standard part of the response DTO just by declaring the response status property. We can also declare validation rules themselves directly on the request ETO itself applied to individual properties or custom validators for the whole message. If we look at an example bookings application, we have a create booking request ETO with declarative validation rules using attributes. These validations are enforced before the message makes it to our service implementation, further simplifying our service logic. Requests that fail validation populate the response status on our response DTO, informing our client of the error. This includes metadata like what property the error relates to on the request, enabling a simplified mapping to UI components like data entry fields. We can simplify this even further again by using a service stack feature called auto query crud. Onto our create booking request, we attach the iCreateDB interface specifying our database model class, Booking. ServiceStack will then use the structure of our Booking class to generate a create booking service implementation for us. We get a web service API we need while still controlling validation rules on the request DTO, further simplifying our ServiceStack project. Additional attributes on the request DTO can even provide audit behavior for our service, again adding to generic functionality you don't have to write yourself. Pulling all the request and response class metadata together, we can even start generating a user interface for managing data in our CRUD-based systems. You could build this type of interface yourself, but we've built Service Stack Studio that does exactly this. Studio gives us a dynamic, capability-based UI driven completely by the message DTOs and related metadata. There is one more way we can highlight the power of this message-centric design. You don't even need your own request DTOs. If you already have structured data in your relational database, like PostgreSQL, MySQL, MSQL, or SQLite, you can use ServiceStack's auto query with auto query gen to generate the DTOs and service implementation for you. This functionality generates expressive web service APIs entirely from your database table structure. These generated services are ServiceStack services with well-defined message contracts, which means all the client and developer features work out of the box with these generated services as well. You can see how this works for yourself in our video using the Chinook sample database. In minutes we go from a standalone database to managing data, users, validation and permissions in ServiceStack Studio. Autogen can also instantly generate the C-sharp code for these runtime only services, giving you the same functionality as the generated services but with the control to customize them as you need. This is all made possible due to how fundamental message-based architecture is to ServiceStack. Message-based designs spread simplicity that can reach all clients regardless of platform, enabling reuse and maximizing your development efforts. If you find yourself spending days, weeks, or even months building expressive and flexible web service APIs for your systems, give ServiceStack a try for free at servicestack.net forward slash trial. I hope this video was useful and thanks for watching.